In today's video, we're going to be looking at the Sony A6400. Now, since September, I have moved to Sony and my main two cameras have been the Sony a7R4 and the Sony a6400. And recently, I decided just to do a POV using this camera. And a lot of people were messaging me on whether or not this is a good starting place with photography. And it got me thinking. Is this a great starting place for photography and is it a great choice still in 2021? The A6400 is often the go-to camera for when I'm filming videos like this as it's got the flippy screen, it's really easy to use and because of the Sony e-mount there are a large selection of lenses to choose from. But because my A camera is a Sony a7R4, all the lenses I have are really for full-framed cameras. However, what I've found is the full-frame lenses work equally as well on the A6400. So if you wanted to get full-frame lenses and maybe you're going into full-frame in the future, it's a really good starting block for all that. Now, when I was looking for a second camera to support my a7R4, there was a lot of options out there with the Sonys. But I decided on the A6400 over the A6600 for a few reasons. The first one is the price. The A6600 is £500 more expensive than the A6400. And as well, because I'm using a Sony A7R4 anyway, that's doing most of the heavy lifting. But if I was starting out in photography and I was looking for my very first camera for photography, then the A6400 would be that complete package. Now the A6600 does have a couple of improvements over the A6400. First and foremost is the five axis of in-body stabilization. From using five axis of in-body stabilization for a couple of years now, I have noticed it does make a big difference when you are doing some photography and filming. But for the A6400, there are lenses available that do offer optical steady shot in the lens itself, which does give similar effects to five axis of in-body stabilization. But if your main focus is primarily on video, then you could always invest in something like a gimbal, which will cost you less than £300. The one that I am using that supports my Sony cameras is the Weeble S, and this will offer me better stabilization than what I'd ever find with five axes of in-body stabilization. Now, the only other reason I looked at the A6600, and that was because of the battery life. The A6400's batteries do deplete quite quickly, but I just bought an extra few batteries, so I never have this problem. And if I do run out of batteries on a shoot, which is very unlikely, I always take a power bank with me, and I can just charge my batteries on the go if one of them runs out. So by the time the other two run out, I've got one fully charged. But if you're planning on doing a longer form of video, say a podcast, a live stream, whatever it may be, you can always just get a plug for the mains and stick it straight into the camera so then you're never going to encounter any problems with running out of battery. Now if you are looking at using the A6400 for filmmaking then you don't need to look any further. The specs in this thing are incredible and the most amazing thing is as well the A7R4 right here which is a camera that cost three times as much as this camera they have exactly the same video settings and options. The only difference is that's full framed this is a crop censored. It has 4K that's down sampled from 6K up to 30 FPS. It also has 1080 at 120 FPS and 1080 at 60 FPS. It also has focus peaking, zebras, a flippy tilty screen so you can see yourself whilst vlogging. But if you are planning on vlogging with this camera, then get this little accessory right here because it's kind of stupid. The microphone mount is right here. But if you put your mic here, you'd be blocking the screen. So this little thing just puts it at the side. This camera also has all the picture profiles, cine profiles, S-Log profiles, and HLG. For talking head, I found myself using HLG a lot more because it makes it easier to color grade this stuff. The other reason to get something like this instead of the A6600 is again that 500 pound price difference. And with that extra change, you can get some superb lenses for your camera. Uh, the lenses I'd recommend is one of them I heard great things about is the 16mm f1.4 for vlogging or anything like this. This is a superb lens. I'd personally then recommend something like a zoom lens if possible. Um, I wouldn't recommend 24 to 70 if you're just starting out because that is a thousand pound, which is just as much as the camera itself. But I think there is a lot of great options. I've heard good stuff about the 18 to 135. Uh, just shop around and see what's going to be most suitable for you when starting out. Now, in terms of the specs for photography, this is a little beast that packs one hell of a punch. This camera has an APS-C crop sensor, 24 megapixel sensor, 11 FPS burst shooting, mechanical and silent shutter modes, 850 auto focusing points, 
which is a bit mad because my very first camera only had 39 autofocusing points. So for focus, you're covered. This also has the real-time tracking and Sony's eye focus, which is just superb. Overall then, for photography, this thing has you covered, but if you want to check out some of the previous work I've done for photography with this, then there is a lot over on my Instagram, or you can go and check out the recent POV video I did with the A6400. So again, if you're just starting off, you're brand new to all this, the A6400 is the camera to go for, even in 2021. I would highly recommend this camera. Anybody who's looking at doing photography, YouTube, video, and even maybe filmmaking, this camera will have you covered on all fronts. Anyway guys, if I missed anything in today's video, then drop it in the comment section below. And if you did like today's video, make sure you hit the like button and maybe consider subscribing. It'd be deeply appreciated. But until next time, everyone, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.